Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is The Road to Revolution. So we're going to be talking about five terms that as you do some reading and learn about the time period of the 1760s and 70s as America is building towards a separation with England that you can kind of gear in on these terms, uh, focus in on these terms as a way to kind of help understand a, a really complex era. All right, so first first term for us to, uh, to to understand, Sugar Act, okay, Sugar Act. Now, there's a lot of different pieces of legislation that Parliament's going to pass in the 1760s and early 1770s that the colonists have a real problem with. Uh, well, not all of them, some of them love it, uh, but many colonists are going to have a real problem with. And really, much of this begins after the end of the Seven Years' War, uh, the Peace of Paris, and the movement on the part of Parliament to be able to start paying off the, the, the debts from war. Now, the colonists didn't have to pay back the entire burden of the war, which was over 100 million pounds, but they had a percentage of this that they were expected, the colonies were expected to pay, and the idea was that these taxes are going to help to, to be able to do it. The Sugar Act is also known as the Revenue Act, and it's enacted in 1764. And the idea is the distillation or use of molasses in order to produce goods like rum was something that colonists and others had been able to find workarounds from so that they avoided paying a tax on molasses. Uh, and this had been happening for nearly over 30 years. So they were going to decrease the tax of something that existed on the books already, but they were going to up the kind of enforcement in order to kind of get folks to pay. And this, of course, caused great consternation uh, and unrest in the public, uh, beginning again in 1764 and into 1765. Eventually, the Sugar Act is repealed, but uh, this kind of leads us into our, our second point. Uh, and our second point is the Stamp Act. Now, the Stamp Act is kind of the more formal one that we tend to think of. Uh, so this is enacted in 1765. Uh, it places uh, a stamp on printed goods in the colonies, uh, and it's a more public way in which the British are taking uh, a kind of a stance about uh, the role of parliament, parliamentary authority, uh, and the colonial kind of position within the political structure of the British state uh, in the 18th century. Now, uh, the Stamp Act was something that uh, galvanized people, right? You started to see street protests uh, and, you know, this movement into uh, economic protest as well. Eventually, of course, it's repealed, but this question of parliamentary authority to legislate or make tax legislation for the colonies is really kind of uh, a big, 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 big part of this. All right. Uh, number three, Boston Massacre, right? This happens in the early 1770s. Uh, British troops have been deployed to Boston, uh, and what happens is some of them have uh, are on duty outside the uh, the customs house. Uh, some folks gather around the customs house uh, and begin uh, throwing things at them, yelling things at them, uh, and eventually one of the British soldiers fire uh, as their gun, uh, and others fire, and a few individuals are killed, including uh, Crispus Attucks, uh, a young African American uh, man, uh, and the massacre itself uh, becomes. Uh, of course, a, a, a rallying cause uh, of and confirmation bias uh, for those who are opposed to the British presence in this way uh, in the colonies, uh, you know, something that they can point to uh, and demonstrate, see, look, this is the measure of British resolve. Uh, you know, they're firing at unarmed people. Uh, so it was a terrible tragedy, obviously, uh, with a lot of implications. Uh, number four, the Sons of Liberty. All right, the Sons of Liberty. Now, this is not, uh, you know, something like a you know motorcycle group or anything like that, right? Sons of Anarchy or whatever. Uh, the Sons of Liberty uh, was a, a political organization uh, in the late 1760s uh, that coordinated protests and it communicated between colonies uh, against uh, British authority and British commerce. Uh, you eventually had the organization, the Daughters of Liberty, uh, the Sons of Liberty as well, would sort of spread outside of uh, colonial North America, British North America, into other uh, British areas as well. Uh, and so they really kind of represented, again, a part of this process, this uh, protest process and the communication of, you know, kind of the political ideals uh, of uh, 
the opposition uh, to British taxation. Because a big part of this question of revolution was, remember, since independence doesn't happen until uh, 1776, right, what are folks seeking, right? Uh, they don't like how the British are treating them. They think that Parliament is exceeding its authority. Well, part of this relates to, again, the question of what does it mean to be British or English? And this question of, you know, what does, you know, where is Parliament's authority? And it really kind of goes to the English Constitution and all of this. Uh, which kind of brings us to, you know, our, our last point, uh, which is common sense, all right, common sense. Common sense was a pamphlet uh, written by Thomas Paine and published in January of 1776, and it's perhaps the most important political pamphlet in American history. Uh, and Paine was, you know, certainly a radical for his day, far more so uh, than many of the other founders. And common sense, one of the things it really does well is much like the title of the pamphlet, it takes a complex argument and makes it plainly uh, that th there is no real justification for hereditary monarchy uh, and that separation ultimately is okay. And this is something that within six months, seven months uh, of the publication and, and popularity of it, uh, you will see within the Continental Congress uh, in the spring and early summer of 1776, as the war has already started, uh, a support for uh, independence uh, as the political objective of the revolution. Thank you.